Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV, the 32nd annual International Geoscience and Remote Sensing Symposium, known as IGARS, was recently held in Munich, Germany. The conference gave scientists, engineers, and educators an opportunity to discuss the latest developments in remote sensing and exchange ideas with other members of the international scientific community. At IGARS 2012, I got the chance to speak with the director of the World Climate Research Program. Let's see what he had to say. I'm here today with Gassim Azwar, who is the director of the World Climate Research Program. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Good morning, thank you. I just want to start by asking you a bit about the role of uh, remote sensing, of satellite Earth observation in the World Climate Research Program. Uh, an extremely important role that uh, the space-based observations play in observing for us to understand the Earth system, including its climate. Um, what is unique about the space-based observations are that they give us holistic view of the planet Earth and they give us access to some remote corners of the Earth that uh, we cannot access otherwise, for example the polar regions. And as a result of international cooperations and unique comp contributions by um, space agencies such as European space agencies over the past 20 years, we now have a a large number of uh, satellites in space that are observing Earth and they're practically observing every aspect of Earth uh, from space and uh, as a result we are able to use observations from these multiple satellites to ra unravel some mysteries of the Earth system that have been uh, have, have not been able to explore over the past uh, 100 years or plus. Now, is there any specific information that we can get from satellites or only from satellites to help us improve our understanding of the climate? Yes, uh, for example, uh, we get uh, some information uh, from satellites based on the, gravity, the changes in gravity of the Earth that indicate what is actually happening below the Earth's surface, uh, what is happening to the aquifers. These are the reservoirs of fresh water that uh, are residing deep within the Earth's system we get uh, unique observations or information about the rapidly changing um, polar regions. Uh, the ice that covers some parts of the sea surrounding the Greenland and Antarctica, for example. Um, these are some specific examples of what space offers that would not be possible otherwise. And as I said, they give us holistic view of the Earth, that when you go um, using traditional uh, methods for measurements. We get measurements from one spot or one location or a, sort of a relatively small area and the satellites give us wall-to-wall -wall measurements from pole-to-pole -pole measurements of the Earth system. Now do you foresee any specific challenges to Earth observation for the future that might affect uh, our understanding of the climate? Of course, um, one major challenge is uh, for us as we launch these new satellites and uh, learn uh, some uh, new aspects of the Earth system. We would like to, uh, some of these um, problems require longer term measurements, uh, measurements that uh, span across multiple years, multiple decades. And usually these uh, satellites have limited lifetime. And uh, for us to continue to have the observation across multiple decades require launching several of them. And it's very difficult to secure the funding and organize their launching uh, on time to have uh, overlap between the old and the new ones. Um, that's, for example, one specific challenge. Another set of challenges that are now increasingly facing us uh, is the ability to extract the useful information content of these space-based observations and make them available as near to real time as we get these observations to decision makers. Um, this is specifically important for those who deal with the natural hazards, they want to mitigate the risks associated with them, or they use this information to arrange for post-disaster recovery uh, activities. Uh, so these are some of the exciting challenges or opportunities that um, are in front of us, but having uh, organizations such as European Space Agency 
that not only invest in building the satellites, um, but now they're investing in um, basically reprocessing all the historical records to make long-term uh, observational records with very high fidelity, high precision, um, to be used for study of the climate. Uh, for example, the European Space Agency has a new initiative called uh, Climate Change Initiative uh, that specifically attracts experts from around Europe uh, to take all available observations from the past 20 years and bring these observations together consistently, uh, process them, calibrate them, to make them as accurate as possible, as high quality as possible for scientists to use them for a study of the climate. Well, Gassim Azra, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. My great pleasure. And that brings us to the end of this special edition of Earth from Space. Remember that to learn more about space and about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int. From the ESA Web TV Studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels.